Welcome. Thank you for joining me. Gray Board Gamer here with Rob from the Beans and Dice podcast, and we're going to be playing a three-player game of smartphone. It'll be myself and Rob and Steve, the AI player provided by the game. We're going to take a few moments to go through the setup, and then we'll get into the mechanics and actually play a full game. First, we have the board where everyone can reach it. We have our markers for each round. The game is played over five rounds. You can see the victory point track over there. Whoever has the most victory points at the end is the winner. Each round goes through eight phases and we'll use those markers to track them along the way. If you're playing with less than five players, you have to put retailers out on the board. And that's dictated in the rule book as far as where they will go and how many depending on your player count. Steve, our AI player, does count as a regular player. So this is a three player game. So we'll follow the rules in the book and put the retailers out. As you can see in the rule book, it shows you the placement for the retailers for a two, three, and four player game. So we're going to be using the three player version right here. It says we're going to use retailers to cover Europe and RSA, as well as any medium sized regions that are not occupied by players. So we'll go ahead and put our player tokens in place, and then I'll show you where the retailers will go. Just like the book showed, we're going to put retailers in Europe and here in the RSA. But first, we're going to put our player markers out on our initial starting spots. As the red player, the red berry, I start in CIS, and you can see that square is already colored in in case you forget where you start. It also tells you where you start on your player board. The blue player will start here in South America, and our AI player, Steve, and that's the name given to him by the game, I didn't make that up, will start here in Australia. You can see that the retailers are double-sided and there's more than this available for the game and there's different sizes depending on the sizes of the region. There's a small, medium, and large. These are the random ones I've grabbed out for what we need and the sides are different so we'll choose a random side. But first we're going to go into Europe. I'm going to flip the retailers around under the table and then I'll have Rob call out keep it or flip it and then we'll put them out. So we'll start with Europe. Uh, we'll keep Europe. Keep it, so that's the side that will go up. And the significance of retailers, and you'll learn throughout the game, is we cannot place our buildings here any longer. They're actually going to go on the retailer spots. And then we have RSA, which is our only small one. So do you want to keep it or flip it? Let's flip that one. So we'll flip it to that side, and in this case it will provide no bonus at all. And then we have to put them in every medium location that is not occupied by a player. As you can see, each player starts. The green would be here, the yellow here, in all of the mediums. And you can see on the board that the M shows you that those are medium-sized markets, L for large and S for small. So we're going to go to North Africa and India. We'll start with North Africa. Keep it or flip it. Let's keep that one. We're going to keep it the way it is. That will give us a bonus. And for India? Let's flip India. Flipping India to a no bonus side. So not a lot of bonuses for retailers out there for us, only the two locations. And we'll explain what those powers mean as we get to those phases of the game. Another part of the setup, if you look here at the bottom of the board, these are the technologies that we can research. These are double-sided. You can see in the corners here that there's a darker color that's the more advanced side we're going to play with the beginning side of each of these technologies and then each of these are the same on both sides and these are the patent squares that we'll gain during the game for the red victory point number on them next we're going to set the improvement market over here and just off screen where you can't see is a stack of tiles so we'll bring them in one at a time and place them on these five spots that we'll be able to acquire during phase four of the game. You can see this player board right here. This is Steve. You can see his little token right there. This is how he will play during the game and the game has a script for him that lays out what he does on each round. We'll go over that each time it's his turn. 
And then again, we have our victory point marker um, up here in the top corner of the screen. And that is a little more significant because you can see that the players all start with different victory point totals. And that relates to the market, which is over here. The market over here, at the beginning of the game, we're going to place our cubes in the same exact order as the victory point track where they start. And we're going to start at number five. Well, the market's going to start at price five. On the victory point track, I am all the way to the right with the red. Right in the middle would be Steve. And right next to Steve on the left would be the blue player. And if we had a green player, they would be here, and then the yellow would be there. This is an important part of the game because once we get to phase four of each round, depending on what price in the market you're at, that'll dictate the player order for each phase starting with four. Along with these improvements here, the stack that we have off to the side, there's also a stack of these goods tokens. They're the same on either side. And just like I always do, I'll explain what things are as they come up in the game instead of front-loading the playthrough with a whole bunch of rules for you to listen to before we actually get to the action of the game. I'll give you a quick overview of the player parts. Each player starts with their own individual improvement, and these are all different depending on the player. Each player gets the tray with the same components in them. You have these little cubes which are goods that you can sell. Next we have these little stair step progress tokens. Those are used during the building of a technology and during the logistics phase to make progress in different areas. And then we have the office buildings, which you saw us place the first one in our home region. And these will get placed during the game also. That'll be important because we have to have one of these in a location in order to actually sell goods and gain victory points. Both players start with two boards, one light, one dark. The only significance of that is so you know that each player has one of each. After that it doesn't mean anything. The boards are the same for each player. They're double-sided. This is how we will get the different actions during the game. During phase one, we set these up along with our improvement here that we start with, plus any improvements we gain during the game. And we'll go through each of the phases and I'll talk about what we do in each phase before we actually do it. And then after we've gone through all eight phases for the first round, we'll speed up and, and do the phases a lot quicker. Each player also has a player screen it has art of your headquarters on one side, what your starting token is, what your starting victory point number is, where you start, and then you'll see it has these multiplication tables on either side, and that comes in quite useful when you're doing victory points, especially later in the game. You'll see that you can sometimes have dozens or even hundreds of victory points in the game. So if you don't feel like doing math, they have that supplied for you. Okay, we're ready to start the game. What I'll do is I'll go through each phase and explain how it works as we're doing it. Like I said, then we'll speed up in the later rounds and show you what we're doing still, but we won't talk about it in depth as much. We may talk a little bit here and there about why we decided to do something or what the strategy was or what we were thinking. Again, we're not experts at this game. We've only played it. I've only played it a few times. Rob's played a few rounds. So if we make any mistakes, if we do something obviously dumb because, you know, we should have done something else for points, that's going to happen. We just really want to show you how the game works and see if it's right for you by watching the playthrough. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to move this out of the way so I don't bump it and knock it on the floor. And we're in the planning phase when we do this behind our screens here so the other player can't see. You have any improvements that you have available and you have your two pads that are double-sided. Now the rules say that you have to cover one of the pads, it can be either one on the bottom, any of the sides, with one of the other ones, and you're going to overlap one to four cells on the other one. And this can be done in any fashion. The only rule is they have to be parallel or perpendicular to each other, 
you can't put them on at a diagonal or some weird way. You have to obviously be able to see which cells are being covered. And this is important because once you cover them up and you lift your screen, whatever symbols you have showing, those are what are going to be available for you during this round. So I have to plan what I want to do. This factory will let me get an improvement. This crate will let me get goods. This purple sprocket lets me research technology. The truck allows me to use logistics to get into other areas. And then the price symbol will either raise or lower the price of goods on the market. In addition to placing these overlapping, you can do the same with your improvements, but they must be on the cells that would represent this bottom board. I couldn't come over here and do it like this because this cell is sticking out past what this is here. And you can do this in any combination that you want. Again, only the cells showing are going to give you the actions available. Also, for every square that you have overlapped, every cell, in this case one, two, four, you're going to get an additional good, and you'll see that in phase three. So I'm gonna go ahead and plan mine out. Rob's doing his now, you can see what he's doing over there while I'm figuring out what I'm doing here. Which way do I wanna go with this? Do I want to move into regions? Do I want to sell a bunch of goods? This is what you have to figure out which way you're going to take it. I think I'm going to have a hard time figuring out what I want to do. I can't do that because that would be an illegal move. So I'll go like this and I'll use another rule that if I do not want to place any of my improvements down, you can flip it over and that'll be one good in phase three. So I've made my decision. Rob, I'm good. He's good to go. So we will both take our boards away and what happens with Steve you can see over here that he has uh, a good which is the same whatever color he had in this case he's the black shooting star player his goes down in this space just kind of half on and off the screen that's the researching phase for him basically the um, planning phase so in phase one Steve will get a good will go on his board and whatever is here waiting to be researched will move up. Everything is available to Steve during his turn. So we've all done the planning phase. I've done mine. Rob has set his. Steve is ready to go, which means we will now move into the setting the price phase. Now we'll look on our boards and every plus or minus dollar symbol is how much our price will fluctuate. And it looks like everybody, in this case, is going down two. Minus two. Because I have a minus two, so does Rob, and so does Steve. So all of these maintaining the position they're in would move down two. And that is it for setting the prices. Then we move over to phase three, which is the production phase. And this is where we're going to get our goods. So I'll do Steve's first. I'm going to move his organizer into frame here. And on his player board, Every crate that he has, in this case he has three, four, five, six, plus that one, seven. I'll take seven of his goods from his supply and move them over to the available area. So that's six and seven. And now we'll do the same with our player boards. In my case, I have three, so I'll move three plus the one that I have here will give me four, and I overlap one cell, which will give me five total. Three for my black crates, one for my unused improvement, and one for my overlap cell. I have five as well, uh, identical, three showing on my boards, uh, one for the tile that I flipped and chose not to use the other side, and then I have one overlapping cell, so I get one additional, so also five. Now that we have our goods, we're going to move into phase four, which is improved production, and this is where, where you're at on the sales price chart over here matters. Because starting now with phase four, 
and going through the rest of the phases, we will go in priority order. The way the priority works is the person with the lowest price would go first in this phase, in each subsequent phase. In this case, all three of us are tied. When you have a tie, you go over to the victory point board, and whoever has the lowest number of victory points would go first. And we're gonna actually go in this exact order because that's exactly how the victory points start. So we're gonna start with Rob, Steve, and then I will go last in this phase. So we're in the improvement production phase. Rob will go first. And the way that works is if you look on either of our boards, if this factory symbol is showing, then you can get an improvement. And you do so by choosing any one of these from the queue. If you can't choose one because your factory symbol is not showing, you would get one of these goods in its place. I'm going to go ahead and select the second one down here. This shows a goods tile with a discount on price as well as a logistics symbol. Logistics. I'll place that actually in the insert here. And by putting it in the insert, you know that you cannot use it this round. It's going to be available for you next time. We've already done the planning phase anyway, so that's kind of obvious, but we always do it just to, to keep the play areas a little neater. Next, we would have Steve. And what Steve does is he takes the topmost one available, and he'll put it in his pending, which means it'll be available to him next round. And my factory symbol is showing. Do I want to go for goods or goods and price? I think I'll take the double goods to be used later on. Now we'll move to the research technology phase in priority order, starting with Rob. And what you can do here is you look on your planned out player boards, and for every purple sprocket symbol, you're going to get one of those uh, progress little ladder bar shaped things. In this case, he's going to have two. And he's going to place them on one or more of these technologies and this number in the upper corner is how many of those improvement tokens that it will take in order to gain in this case this is called the patent first person to get this will put it with their organizer and they'll get those points at the end of the game every player after them it's a little bit cheaper to research the technology but they will not get these points okay i'm going to select this one with the uh, picture of the battery. My thinking there is that in my starting area, uh, I can potentially build there, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. That makes sense, and he needs two more to get the four there, and once he does get there, he'll put one of his office buildings here, and if he's the first one, he'll take the patent, and then once you have researched it and placed your office there, this power will happen each round in the, in the phase that it's designated. In this case, it would be phase six. Next, we have Steve. Steve has three symbols showing. What Steve does is he places first on any technology that he's currently working on. In this case, he does not have any of these currently working on. And I'm following a script that's laid out in the rule book that's specifically made, as you can see, for Steve, the artificial intelligence player. If that first one does not apply, he goes to the least expensive technology that still has one of these patents available. In this case, it would be this first one. He does have three to start, so he will immediately have what he needs to get this patent. And then I will drop the rule book, and then we will place it here in his player board, and he'll get those six victory points at the end of the game. Since he had enough to purchase it, it will go back to his supply, the, the ones that he used. Now that he did research it, he will get one of his office buildings there. So we know now that he has researched the pin drop symbol here. And that'll come into play when you're selling goods, and we'll talk about that in phase seven. On my player board, I have two purple sprockets. And I'm going to come here and research this one, which is going to be four total because this will give me one less and my cost researching in the future. Plus, I think Steve is going to beat me to this three anyway. So I'm not going to try to get that one before him. We can go over here and research this at a cheaper rate and get one of our offices there so we have that technology available to sell 
we just don't get the victory points because he took the patent already. Then we move to phase six, which is the logistical phase, starting with Rob. We look on his player boards, and for every blue truck symbol, he will get two of the progress markers again, and he'll place those logistical markers in any location that is attached to where he already has an office in place. So he started in South America, which means he can go to the Caribbean. He can come over here to the RSA, North Africa, or he can come up here to the United States. And he'll place his tokens in these research spots. Well, not research, but these logistical spots. And the little truck symbol that you see on there is how many he needs to reach the threshold of putting an office building down. Since I'm able to place two, I will come to the Caribbean, which requires two to then be able to place an office building. So after placing those, I'll take an office and place it in the leftmost available slot in the Caribbean, and then I'll clear those out. So me and Rob had a discussion off camera as to what this meant. And we looked online, didn't really find any definitive answers, but after talking it out, Rob came up with what I believe is the correct answer. It says here, in the first round of the game, you need to place Steve's marker by following the steps described in phase six, logistics on page three. So what that means is during the prepping for the game for Steve, before the game begins, you're supposed to jump over here, follow this algorithm to place his marker on the board. And it says here that we place progress markers. Well, this is during the setup, so he doesn't have progress markers. So we skip that and we go down to this algorithm. So where, when he places an office, which he already has one, his starting office, which is in Australia, and you can see it over there, Rob's holding his marker. It says he will move to the largest region available to Steve. And in this case, the largest region available is across the ocean over to the U.S. So that, as you can see, is where his marker is going to start the game. That way, when it's his turn now, and he has some logistic tokens to use, he's already in a location, instead of what I said just a minute ago, that he would start off the board and then come on the board. It didn't make a whole lot of sense, so we started talking about it and came up with this solution. And after Rob explained it to me, I think this makes the most sense too. So Steve has two of the logistic symbols, and since we've set him up the way we think is proper, he's over here in the U.S., and he's going to place all of his available until he can get an office, and he needs four in the U.S., so the two is not going to do it for him. And that means it'll make it my turn. I have two logistic symbols also. And I'm up here in CIS, not exactly sure what that stands for, but I can move to China, I can come over here to Europe, and I can go across the ocean over to Canada, which is the route I will take because Canada only requires two. So I'll place my two there. I've met the requirement, which allows me to place an office and then I will take my tokens back since I fulfilled the requirement. And now we'll move into selling goods in phase seven, starting with Rob. And we already know that he has how many goods? It's five. You have five total. So what you do is, again, you go on the priority rule. In this case, Rob will go first. And you can place your goods in any region that you have in office. So he can sell goods in the Caribbean or South America. His price is three. And you have to place your goods from left to right in whatever place you can place them first. Since his price is three, that's higher than this buyer's threshold of two, so you would skip over that one, and you could put them on three, seven, four, or five. It can be the same as or less than, but if it's over the amount, you cannot sell in that region. Or to that buyer, I mean, not, not the region itself. He has one left. He does not have any technology available. He would need either battery, 4G, a pin drop controller, or a battery here in order to place another one. So he's just going to lose that good for this round. Steve has seven goods. Let me put his tray where we can see it. I'll put it right here on his player board. What he does is he places one in each region where he's the only player with an office. 
and in this case it's only Australia and his price is three so he can go right here on that four and then he would place one cube in any region where two or more players including him have an office and he'll continue placing cubes in those regions as long as he has them available and he can actually place them according to whatever buyer they are also so he's going to go after you if he's in the same region as you and try and block things up to keep you from using them after that what he'll do is he'll place as many possible in each region where he only has the one so since he's not in a region with anybody else we skip over that come back to where he's by himself he can place on the six because his price is three and that's lower he has the pin drop technology and you can see here too that he has it but that is not available here so he's only going to place those two goods i have five goods available i'm in canada and cis my price is three so i can come here in every location because my price is low enough and the same here over in canada i have not researched the technology so i'm going to lose my fifth good as well Next, we receive victory points in phase eight. I mean, we'll still go in order, but getting victory points isn't necessary to be done in order, but we'll start with Rob. And what we do is we look at how many cubes he has out there total. In this case, he has four. You multiply the number of cubes or goods that you have sold by your price. In this case, it's three and four, which is 12. So he'll move up 12 points on the victory track from four to 16. Steve only has the two, so he'll only move up six. That'll put him at 11. I have four, and my price is three, so I'll move up 12 also. That'll put me at 19. Next, we see who controls each region. We'll just go around the map starting up here. I'm the only one in Canada, which means I will get one victory point. And you get the victory points whichever one is furthest to the right that has an office in it. So if I controlled this region as far as selling goods, then people had other buildings here, I would get four victory points. If you see a small number, that means second place gets awarded victory points also. Again, whoever controls a region is whoever has the most goods sold there. In the beginning, it's pretty simple to see, but later on you'll have multiple uh, players in each location. We move down here to the Caribbean, which will give Rob one point, and then South America will give him two points. We move around the map, we come over here to CIS, which will give me two points. And down here with Steve, he's in Australia, he'll gain two. And if we look on here, it tells you what to do at the end of the round. We're going to pick up all of our cubes. Any unused ones will go back into our supply. Like Steve gets a lot of cubes, but he doesn't use a lot in the beginning, but he will start racking them up later on. So we have all the cubes off. Next, we're going to discard all of these improvements that did not get taken and they're out of the game and we'll reload it with five new ones. Lots and lots of goods available. Then we'll reset the market to five. We always start at five when it comes to pricing our goods. This will come back here and then we will move over to round two. <laughs> Thank you.